So we've been using Academia since the spring of 22, um, and I am just very happy with it. It has been an absolute lifesaver for me personally in running our program. Um, we um, inherit, I inherited this program from a former tutoring coordinator and we were using a different software. And as we were growing, it was just not meeting our needs at all. Um, so my name is Kendra Richard and I've been with the LEP since January of 22. Um, so right when I started, we did a giant software overhaul and added Acudemia, which was a really fun challenge, but also um, great. Uh, so then um, I got my BA in writing and drama from University of Maryland in Baltimore and my MFA um, in creative writing and poetics from the Jack Kerouac School of Disembodied Poetics at Naropa here in Boulder, Colorado. And I'm originally from Shapley, Maine. Um, and this is my dog Tala and we live in Evergreen, which is about 40 minutes west of Denver. A um, little bit about the program. We are a fee-for-service program. We just celebrated our 40th anniversary last year. So we've been on campus since 1982. We're a top 10 program for students with disabilities. We offer individualized support for neurodiverse learners with specific learning disabilities, such as ADHD, um, students on the autism spectrum, and or students who have a history of learning differences. A majority of our students submit documentation outlining a diagnosed learning disability. We service about 350 to 370 students per year. This is our lovely building, the Catherine Musato Hall. Um, for our main LAP services, we offer academic counselors that meet weekly with every student. We offer tutoring, which is the program that I oversee, and then um, as well as executive functioning, skill development, leadership opportunities, social skills building and events, and transition programming. All of our tutors are certified, and our tutoring program is certified through the College Reading and Learning Association, or CRLA. And just kind of briefly, we love this um, definition of neurodiversity. It's from our student-led neurodiversity research group on campus. So neurodiversity refers to how natural variety in brain structures and functions impact our human experiences. There are a lot of negative stigmas surrounding disabilities, including indivis invisible disabilities like ADHD, dyslexia, and autism. And then again, just kind of thinking about neurodiversity as an umbrella term. So under that encompasses a lot of different learning differences and disabilities and how and what languages individuals use to identify those disabilities or differences for themselves, as well as all of these fall on a spectrum. So one student with ADHD is going to be very different than another student with ADHD and across the board for all learning differences. And we just encourage our tutors to think about you know, what universal design, um, which I'll talk about in a second. So just kind of some stats here um, about disabilities and disclosures. So at DU, one in five students are registered with disability services, but only about a third of students who have a disability will actually inform their school. So while tutors can't ask students what they're going through or what their diagnosis is, by giving them the tools to utilize best practices for all students, we're able to really help our students without me needing to even know what diagnosis they have. We also work a lot with executive functioning, which is the self-regulation skills and the mental processes that enable us to plan, focus attention, remember instructions, and juggle multiple tasks successfully. Um, and then we also work on you try to utilize sensory need sensitivity. So in some cases, some people, the brain has trouble organizing and responding to information from the senses. So certain sounds, smells, textures, and tastes can feel um, really overwhelming for a lot of our students. So in thinking about UDL, and this is something I love, that Academia is really user-friendly and accessible for our students. Um, so when thinking about UDL, it was originally designed for architecture. So thinking about where all of the accessible doorways and accessible restrooms, where those accessible parking spots, that's not something you add after. That's something you think about in the original design process. So we think, so that also got carried over into education. So UDL for higher education really helps create syllabi and create structures for students that work for all students, such as like using captions, which I couldn't figure out in Teams <laughs> how to use my captions. So I'm not practicing very good on what I preach here, um, but definitely thinking about you know, how do we 
is your syllabus screen reader friendly? Is the PDF you're requiring students to use screen reader friendly? Are all of your documents and materials accessible for all students? One of our tutors is from Germany and he said that he loves when people have captions because even though he speaks English very well, it's still helpful for him even if he doesn't have a learning difference or disability. If you're not a na native English speaker, um, having captions can be really helpful, or if you have a visual impairment, or if you have an audio impairment. So really thinking about all of these UDL principles in our programming and in our tutoring program. And I'll share this PowerPoint out with any of you if you want to go through and look at any of these resources. Um, and then a little bit more about LEP tutoring. So we're in Denver. We have a lovely view of the Rocky Mountains from my office. <laughs> um, and we um, have some limits on our program, so you're up to two hours per subject per day. Um, and just some um, details, we last year had over 3,500 tutoring appointments for the year. We serviced 228 students in tutoring, which was 69% of our total services, uh, our total student population. We were able to offer over 158 courses, which again, huge shout out to Academia, our former software, everything was by subject area. So it was very vague and very broad and not very useful to our students because just because a business tutor could tutor one business course, it didn't mean they could tutor all business courses. So there was no way to individualize that. So because Academia is all set by registration and courses, it was awesome to be able to literally tutors pick what courses they want to tutor and students are able to individualize picking. They don't have to look at every tutoring option available. They only see the tutors for the courses that they're currently registered in. So again, for our students, because they are a neurodiverse population, it's way less overwhelming. They're able to only focus on the tutors that they would need for their courses and not have to scan through thousands of different courses and tutoring options. Um, we also, um, so we love Academia. We, we've had so much support. Um, Nick and I have gotten a lot, have a lot of back and forth with different support needs, and they've just been so fast and helpful with every need we've had. Um, our IT department worked closely with them as well um, to make sure all the registration goes through every quarter. We're on a 10 week quarter system, so there's not a lot of time for planning and turnaround. So when there are issues, um, I've just had the best things to say about their tech support as well. Um, and then I just added a little photo here, which ties in nicely with um, that update he was talking about. So we have, this is our Academia homepage. So I've got my University of Denver logo up in the top, um, and then I can customize the announcement. So I always try to add pretty seasonal pictures for all the different quarters. And then I'll put um, just kind of important, you know, everyone announcements here, you know, like when the quarter is coming to a close or, if it's a break over summer, we don't offer tutoring except it's like kind of as need basis, but it's usually one to two students, not very many. So, um, you know, I'll put an announcement here, tutoring will resume at the beginning of fall quarter, things like that, that are just kind of helpful that would just get lost in a student's email, but it's able to, um, you know, communicate with all students using it. Um, and again, just the ways I use Academia. So um, we have over 90 active tutors um, and, again, 370 students. So trying to do all of that by hand or trying to use software that's not, you know, very intuitive was really difficult. So by using Academia, it's all in the students' hands. They're able to use it from their phones. They're able to use it really easily with their academic counselors, can pull it up in their meetings. Um, and now that we've really kind of worked on our hiring needs, we have very few courses we're unable to fill and I can all it's just so easy to visualize all the different tutor schedules and um, I just can't say enough about the program's user friendliness from the student and tutor perspective but also the reporting features so before we were having one of our um, accounting tutors help me with all the reporting <laughs> and it was really exhausting and just took a really long time and you know, there, if there wasn't a change or an issue, you had to go back and redo the whole thing. So Academia reports come up in about 30 seconds. <laughs> um, they're so fast and they're so useful. I'm able to, if a, if my director asks me like, oh, how much, tutor, how much tutoring has this student used? I can respond to him within a minute with completely accurate 
tutoring numbers per student per tutor. I use it for my payroll. So our academy is not linked to payroll, but it's I'm able to run a report every time I do payroll that shows me every tutor's individual hours. Um, so and then for my year end reporting, we do a lot of big year end data assessment and reporting. So I'm able to use it for all of that. And it has just changed my life because before it was a really tedious process. And now I can just run reports as I go. I run reports weekly and then I run an end of quarter report. Um, and then plus the payroll kind of day to day use of the reporting. So that was our big draw to Academia. That was the former tutoring quarter. And that was the really the thing that really appealed to her. Um, and I'm just so happy that she chose this because I've used other systems beyond the system I had when I was here. I've used other systems and other roles, and I really think Academia is the most user friendly for both students and tutors, but also from the admin side. Um, I've really found and I probably haven't even dug it. I've probably only used like 15% of the features that this has. So I'm really excited this summer as my project is to do some Academia data mining <laughs> and just go through and really get to see what all of the different features are. Um, now that we have our systems really set. Um, so yeah, I just, I use it every day. The students love it. It's way more, I, I joke, it's way more Gen C friendly. Um, our old system looked really antiquated. This looks much more like the other apps they're using in their lives. So it feels less daunting. It just feels like another piece of all of their other systems they're already using, both personally with social media and then also with um, the DU systems. So um, thank you so much, Academia, for having me and for um, all of your amazing support and how happy we are with our utilizing of the software for our scheduling for our program. And if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to share my journey. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Kendra, uh, thank you so much. That was that was lovely. Um, Sydney has a question. How do you introduce academia to your student population? Our students like the booking appointment links, but they don't necessarily utilize the program itself for anything else. Absolutely. So um, we did a big rollout. Um, when we offered it because we did it for spring, which was kind of an odd time for us in the quarter system. So it's like end of year. So it was like very hard to kind of transition the students, but we figured the fall is so crazy. So the spring, at least we'd have time to troubleshoot and fix things before the fall and have the summer to really kind of fix things if there were issues. But right off the bat, students were kind of on board. They were not very happy with the former software we, we were using. It was really antiquated looking. So it just felt like something from the 90s, like early internet days. And it was, you know, they just didn't get it. They did not like it. And then so that made it easy that it was like, well, look at all these features it has. Look, at, it's way better. And then we did a like a video, like a rollout video with some like EDM music playing and like how to use it. And we did a lot of screenshot and like they have a Canvas page that they use for the LEP. So it just has all different resources available. And the tutoring resources we did kind of step-by-step -step guides on how to use it. So if students were, you know, not sure, but they were back in their dorms later, they could open that up and really get a how-to. And then I did a lot of just drop-in sessions. So um, it really helps just kind of, you know, try it because it always feels the change is hard and new software is daunting for students, especially students with neurodivergent neurodiversity because they often, you know, students with learning differences or disabilities can change can be really overwhelming, especially they already have their routine routine up through spring quarter. And then we did a big change on them right at the end of the year, um, but they really embraced it. And I had I have a survey for feedback. So I said, you know, let me know if something's not working for you. Let me know if anything's challenging, if there's any glitches. So we were just really hands on with the students like we're learning this, too. <laughs> um, but yeah, just trying to really communicate with them so it didn't feel like a surprise and we let them know ahead of time and I was available kind of on call at all times if students had issues and the tutors were really helpful too because they could in their tutoring sessions, you know, walk them through how to make sure they know how to schedule their next appointment. And then we did that was pretty much all of spring was spent really kind of transitioning. But then by the time it got to fall and especially it was really noticeable in the new students in fall because we have all the new freshmen incoming. So they, for them, it was just like, this is great. And they had nothing to compare it to. So there was a little bit of, you know, growing pains that first quarter, but it really, by fall, it was like up and running and students were very happy with it. And I just made one change this year. It used to, when students signed in, they had to type in their um, numbers, like their ID number. 
and we just changed it this year to be a tap card which is huge like now all they do is they come up they tap because that was the one complaint i was getting is that students didn't like that they had to enter like physically enter their id number and now it's a tap card so and rt again our it person works with academia works with uh, and they are just it's been so incredible so it really wasn't as hard as it was as i thought it would be to kind of sell it to them Awesome. Well, thank you again, Kendra. Um, and Nick, as Nick mentioned in the comments, it's super cool to hear how uh, user friendly the system is, the reporting you're able to pull. Um, that's uh, it's I'm really happy to hear that it's it's working well for your for your area. Um, it sounds like you're doing some really great work over there, and I'm glad that we're able to, to help you with that. Um, I don't see any other questions for you in the comments. If people do have questions, um, Kendra's email is up there on the slide. Um, and that was a the really great uh, PowerPoint as well. Um, thanks for bearing with us through the uh, technical issues, but it looks like we, we've we gotten it working. Um, again, thank you so much, Kendra. And I am going to go ahead and uh, wrap it up for the day. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And we hope to see you next month. Don't forget about our upcoming keynote webinar and our conference. Um, I do want to mention, if you are interested in speaking at our conference, we are offering a discount on registration if you do um, do, do a presentation for us. So uh, check that out uh, when you get a chance. And um, if uh, nothing else, we hope to see you at May's um, Academia Monthly Meeting. Thank you so much, everybody, and we'll see you next time.